Right, so this is a quick uh, little uh, tutorial for people that are in Illustrator that are um, kind of at a loss of uh, on how and what to do for their final project. So here I'm showing a bunch of different things on, on what to do with uh, symbols, blend tool, um, multiple gradient, a freeform gradient, 3D, and then a little bit of type as well. So um, as an example, I have this, uh, this project right here. I have things set up in layers. Um, I have, see all those lines that are, you know, all those little dotted lines happening, going on, and it's pretty spaced out. So this is, you know, as I said, um, it could be a, um, a, you know, flyer for a rave or something, you know, that's silly, uh, or an event at the, uh, at the planetarium or something like this. Um, and if I switch over to my view, to my outline right there, you can see that there's not very many shapes. So it's very simple, and this is my type. My type right there is live, and there's a couple of effects on it, right? So I'm going to switch back to preview uh, and into my layers. And what I've done is I've already created a second um, second artboard right here. So I'm just going to demonstrate how to do something like that pretty quickly. So I'm going to lock all my other layers. I'm going to work in my background right here, and I'm just going to make a big rectangle over the whole background right here. So blank, there's no color. I'm gonna pick a color quickly and I'm gonna switch over to my gradient panel right here and I'm gonna hit the freeform gradient right here. And by default, it creates all those color nodes in each corner, four of them. And as you move them around, it changes the blend right away, right? So it changes your, your document background pretty quickly. So by just double clicking on the, any of those nodes, you change the color. So this one is pure white. You can use the uh, the CMYK sliders right here because I'm in the CMYK mode, uh, or you can just use the the eyedropper right here in your uh, in your color hue um, or whatever it's called, uh, and then you change the colors right there. So I'm going to change that one as well. I'm going to make it darker, add a little bit of black to it, to make it deeper. And same thing for this one. I'm going to make it a little redder here. And then this yellow one up here, I'm going to make it uh, brighter. I think it's, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that like that. And you can also increase the size of them and it changes your color right away. So this is my background quickly. Um, I'm going to switch over to my dioche, which is a French word for you know engraving lines, basically. So I'm going to switch to that layer right here, and for this one, it's just you know that those uh, um, those dotted lines and then all those curves and everything. So what I did for this, it's fairly fairly quick as well. Same thing. I start with a an ellipse tool right here, and I put a stroke to it. So in this case, I'm going to pick a purple right in there, and I make that stroke and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to go into my stroke panel right here and I'm going to make it a dash line and a dash line does exactly that it makes your little line right there just a little thicker right so if I make it thicker you just see the, the little lines and I made my dash the smallest possible one and with a three and a half point gap but these are not dots and how to do to change that is I just have to change the caps right here to a rounded cap and now they're dots, just like that. So I can change that, you know, to four, five, whatever, to create a bigger gap. If I change, if I change my dash, you know, so right now I just have a dash and a gap, but if I change my dash again to, let's say, two, and then a, uh, with a gap of, I don't know, three, this is what it does. It does those kind of, you know, um, more code kind of lines as well. So I don't want that. I want to keep it super simple. Um, and I want to keep it, just, you know, dotted, basically just a dotted line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that file right here. I can go into file right there, copy and paste in front, right? So I know the shortcut. So it's command C and command um, F for, um, on a Macintosh. And zoom out a little bit and I'm going to scale it up. So I'm just dragging the corner, not the corner, but the, you know, the centerpiece right there. And then I'm pressing my option key at the same time and option, option and shift key at the same time. And that allows me to, to uh, scale from the center out. Um, that also 
uh, scale the, the size of my stroke because uh, if I double click on my scaling tool right here, I have uh, scale and stroke and effects selected in my, in my um, scaling tool by default. Uh, so I'm just gonna change the width of my stroke to something a lot lighter to a 0.25, right? So it gets really, really thin. You can barely see it. So I'm going to change my dash. To, again, it changed everything. My gap is 11, so I'm going to keep it at five. And that should be easier. Now you can see those tiny little dots. And what that does, what, what I do now is I can select that one right here. This one is too thick, so I'm going to make it 0.75. Select those two. I don't have to select them two actually. I go with my blend tool. I click on my first one, click on my second circle, and you can see that it created a blend of just one extra step. So I double click on my blend tool again, and I go specified steps. This time I go, I don't know, 30, 30 steps. This is what it does. It creates those little dots from the 0.75 stroke to the 0.25, and that's okay. Yeah, I click on okay. So right now it's just this, right? It's just this, basically, right? So you can barely see it. What I want to do now is I want I can change the color so I can, you know, because it goes from purple to purple onto a background, a purple background as well. So I'm gonna make it, let's make it cyan. So you can see that it changes from one color to another. And what I do now is I want to go into, with my direct selection tool, and I select a, select a path or an anchor, and I move it around randomly. Right? And this is what happens. So you bring it close and you bring this one way far down there, completely off the, the grid. And this is what happens. You get some really cool effects like this. And it takes two seconds to make. And maybe if I grab my actual handle right here, there you go. And same thing with the center circle. You just move it around, make it look very organic looking like this. And then just, and then you can repeat the same process with another circle right here. And then this one, we're gonna switch it to a different color, to a pink. Again, I'm gonna create another circle right here. I can also just switch back to my, uh, my, my circle tool. And I don't have to have lined them up. I don't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this time I'm gonna go with a bright orange. make it thicker, and then again, select both so I know where they are. But click on the first one, click on the second one with the blend tool. And there you go. You have already, keeps my 13 already or so. Ooh, I'm not sure what happened there, but it's a, it's a little wonky, I think. <laughs> Let's make sure that I can do this thing right. So let's click on the first one right there and then click on the second one. And it's thinking, okay, it does some really good stuff. Oh, well, we'll keep it like this. Um, and we'll click on this land tool, specified steps. Oh, there's 216 steps. That's why. That's a little too many. So let's keep 45 instead. There you go. It's a little bit more manageable. Um, and again, I just do the same thing, I just warp it you know, with my direct selection tool, change my shape, goof off with it. You can overlap it as well. And okay? so you have one circle overlapping the other and then you create some crazy effects to it. And it's just, I'm just moving the anchors. I can just change the handles as well to expand it. And it just looks a little spacey. So I'm not gonna do a third one, but just, just as an example, you can do all that stuff. And it looks pretty cool. It's pretty spacey. Too. So another thing as I've done, um, as you can see in the uh, the uh, previous page there, there's also all those little globes, orbs, or whatever I call orbs, right? And they're not, they're not even showing up. So how did I manage that? So for that, it's fairly easy as well. Go into my layers, lock my Gioche so that I cannot modify things or grab things by accident. And I go into my orbs uh, layer. So here, is I'm going to have to create something completely different. So first, we're going to create a little circle, right? About this big. We're going to make it a fill. And we, are, we want to have a, a you know a fuzzy edge around it. So we're going to go 
into my gradient right here. And then we're going to make it a radial gradient. So by default, it goes to the yellow again because that's my previous uh, previous document. Um, so I'm going to make it again hot pink. And I'm going to go again so from hot pink to hot pink, right? So it just blends from one color to another, to just the same color, but it blends from over 100% opacity on this on the left hand the left uh, slider right here to the one on the right, which is an opacity of zero. And you can see that it creates a, a bit of a fuzzy edge around it. And all it is is the center is 100% opaque, and then at the edges it goes translucent. So it creates a little bit of that kind of weird glow, right? And this, all I want to do is I want to add that to my symbols palette. I'm just going to click on the plus new symbol right there. I have my object selected. Click on the new symbol, and I'm going to call it Link orb, click OK, and there, now it's a symbol. And I can delete it. I don't need it anymore. But what I want to do now is I want to use the symbol sprayer right here tool. I can make sure, make sure you have that selected. And I'm going to my symbol spray right here. And all it does, it does this. It just spray, it's like a spray can, but it just duplicates your your um, symbol right here. So by changing the size of my brush, and I'm using just my uh, square bracket on my keyboard, um, you can reduce the size of the brush, right? And then that doesn't reduce the size of your orb or your symbol, but it makes it denser, right? So I can do something like this very, very quickly. So I can just go, you know what? Let's make it first very, very loose. Let's make it very loose like this. And let's give it a little bit of a perspective. And then I'm going to do it again. So we select all that. Okay, we'll deselect that. Change the size of the brush and make it a little denser around here. I don't have my dog visiting. Hi, buddy. And I'm just going to just add a few legs or all around like this. And so we have a little bit of a, of a um, somewhat of a perspective. So from here on, I can. Hey, buddy, come on, get out. <laughs> You're interrupting the recording. <laughs> All right, so from now on, I can go back into um, my symbol sprayer tool right here. And this, as I press and hold, I have a few other things uh, at my disposal right here. So I have um, a symbol scruncher, for example. So to make sure that you select the area and you can crunch it, right? So you can kind of collect them and just by click and drag over them, right? What you can do is so you have also uh, symbol shifter tool. In this case, you just kind of you can just move them around, right? So you go, well, you know what? I want to have those a little bit further out, kind of thing, and then this one down here. So you can do that with those tools as well. Um, there is a symbol sizer tool. So I want to have those increase the size of it because I want to have that effect of as if it was closer to me, right? Kind of thing. So it gives it a little bit of a perspective. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other set of um, of uh, spray right there. So this is this one as you hover where you can see the frame right here highlighting. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna do oh, wrong one, symbol, uh, symbol sizer, yeah. I'm gonna make my brush bigger again with my square brackets so I can affect more of them at a time. And I'm just gonna scale them up like this. And now again, back in that tool again, I'm just going back and forth with that tool. I'm going to change, I'm going to go my um, symbol screener tool right here. And all it does, again, same thing. It just makes them a little bit more transparent. So I change my size of my brush and I have a little bit more control over which one become a little bit more translucent. I select my second set of, uh, of icons right here that I sprayed. And I'm just going to change the opacity. Oh, this is too strong. So if it's if it's too strong, you can double click on those tools. Uh, there's the intensity uh, set of symbol density, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can just you know, re, you know bring that to, for example, and you have a little bit more control over how quickly it changes, right? And it just that's all it does, right? It just becomes a little bit more, a little softer kind of thing, right? So it may look like they're floating and they have different densities and different sizes. So basically it, right? Basically I've done this. So if I want to change those, because I have, you know, a couple in my, uh, in my uh, symbol palette already, I did the yellow one 
And if I switch to yellow, um, I can add a few more with my square tool again. And I can add a little bit more, like so. And then and this was a really, really small one. So there you go. So it's really, really small little dots. So it get a little bit funky like that. And then I'm just going to change my screen area again. Maybe a little light, I guess. There you go. So they look like little floaties in my in space. So it becomes really artistic at this point and kind of funky. So I'm done with those. I don't want to go too far uh, into, uh, into uh, the demonstration here. But what you can do as well with the type right here is let's say I'm going to type something else. Make sure that in the right layer. Lauren Lipson by default. And this is in uh, Super Clarendon, which is a you know, kind of a thick slab type uh, serif. It's not a slab serif, but it's a thick serif. Um, Final Frontier, for example. And I can bring this down a little bit so it's a little bit. A little tighter. I can change the font because I'm not a big fan of that. It was just for a demo. I'm going to fix DIN. There's not very many fonts installed on this machine. So, um, I'll play with that a little bit. Um, I want to go left, no, sorry, right aligned. So they're, they look like they're stepped out. I'm going to change the, the lining, the, the leading. And I'm using option and arrow up, so which is an alt and option up to change the leading very, very quickly like this. And, and I'm just going to scale it up just on right there. And I'm going to take the color. Doesn't matter at this point, but I'm going to make it orange. So a little bit of color theory right there for you. But what I did earlier in the uh, in those crazy little effect right that I did right up here is um, it's fairly easy. So this one, I'm just going to move it out of the way. This one is just a dotted line. So it's just an outline again, right? What we did earlier with a stroke, it's the exact same thing. You put a dash, put a tap on it, and a gap in between there, and then you have a dotted line. But for this one, it's a slightly different one. This one is a white type, and it has an effect on it. So what I want to do is I want to go actually select it first. I want to go into my appearance panel and it shows you that it's a few effects right there. There's a scribble and there's a drop shadow with a different opacity. So there's three effects on that one type. So I'm going to go and do this, try to do the same thing right here as well. I'm going to my effect. Uh, I believe it's in stylized right here and I'm going to scribble it. So it looks like it's been home drawn. And it's just an effect, it's still life type. So there's a path overlay. Oops, if you change those, uh, it gets really squirrely, really fast. You can change the variations and it becomes really, really uh, unreadable. Um, so, you know, you got to play with that. You can change the angle of it. So you have, you know, vertical, uh, only horizontal at an angle. You know, you can go bananas as well. So the curves as well, same thing. You get tighter, get looser variations. It's the, the spacing. If you go to spacing too far, it just takes it, away, takes it apart, basically. But it's just, you know, play with the sliders, see how far you can push it, and click OK. So what I did is I, you know, in the previous one, I just wanted to have it yellow so we can see it. Um, I also did another effect on it. I uh, did a little drop shadow on it, just for fun. So I'm doing a multiply for drop shadow. I'm doing a 30% opacity. So if, if I, Change that to 100%, you will see what I mean. So this is, you can see that there the dark shadow right there in the back underneath. And I can increase the size of my blur, right? So I don't want it to be too big, otherwise it gets really, really fuzzy. You can change the color of your, uh, of your dark shadow. So this is already dark on dark, so I'm gonna go even darker right here. And now you can see it a little better. And it's just a multiply an opacity of 100%. So I'm going to reduce my opacity of my drop shadow to let's say 50% and click OK. And at this point, I want to switch to white and change my opacity in my properties panel right here. So this is my opacity. So if I change my opacity, everything gets fuzzier and 
and I mean more and more translucent. But that's not what I want because that is that makes also the um, the drop shadow disappears. So I want to go into my opacity and my my blending mode right here, and I switch to multiply, and the white disappears because it multiplies the white to a, a color, so the white disappears, and all you see now, all is left, is the drop shadow, and it's the same effect that you can do in uh, of course, Illustrator, but in Photoshop and in, uh, in in design as well. So it's a quick little, you know, funky little trick like this, and you can move it around. And all I did to have that extra dot align on top is again I copy, paste in front, so it's twice the same. And now the, the shadow looks a lot deeper. And I go into my appearance panel, and I can select my effects right here, and then delete the, that effect from this one. Delete the drop shadow. I don't want it. And then my opacity delete that as well. So now it's pure white. Go so back to basically the original and I switch it to fill from fill to scroll. Back to my stroke panel, dash line again, round caps, and there you go. And then this time I want to make it yellow. Let's make it orange. And then you can move it just a little bit. Ooh, not that much. And it looks like it's already just like that, just for fun. So this, these are just a simple um, a, a sample, you know, of uh, what you can do in Illustrator, having play, and uh, you know, having you know, having a little bit of fun and playing a little bit with the blend tool and the, your symbol, the symbol sprayer. And I made a circle for the sprayer, really, that you can make stars since this is a space kind of theme. Um, and then have some you know, type effects on it, overlap things, work in layers as always, so you can lock things up and you can turn things off as well. So you can go, you know, you can look at something without having all the other elements on top, right? So always work in, in those type of, um, those type of um, effects right there. So yeah, so have some fun, discover stuff um, uh, right there. Just, you know, it. I played with, you know, the freeform gradients, um, you know, a bunch of different things. And at this point you can play with, you know, you can add a little type as if it was like, you know, a New Year's Eve party, or you can add a little Photoshop image in there. And then by putting it, um, you know, in a different layer within your document, it will be behind those semi-translucent orbs or not. So, you know, it's just a matter of just experimenting with it and having some fun. So I hope that was uh, inspiring. <laughs>